Welcome to McGraw Hill Financial's July Loan Market Overview Clip. I'm Steve Miller, a member of the Leverage Commentary and Data team. Over the next five minutes or so, we'll discuss the challenging conditions that persisted in loan land for most of June and seem likely to continue in July. For real-time updates on the loan market, please follow LCD on Twitter, Facebook, and LinkedIn. As well, you can download this presentation on slideshare.net. Before we start, here's our standard disclaimer. In June, loan market conditions weakened further. In part, investor confidence was nicked by a string of weaker than expected economic reports and the latest act in Greece's ongoing debt crisis. More to the point, technical trends tilted more sharply in favor of investors in recent weeks. Loan supply outran new capital inflows, putting downward pressure on secondary prices and upward pressure on new issue clearing yields. Though not a very big decline, June's 37 basis point loss was the largest in a year. For the first half as a whole, however, the index was up 2.5%. Likewise, clearing yields for June's set of first lien new issue loans widened about 25 basis points to a five-month high. The market's fundamental performance remained robust, however. In June, the loan default rate was steady at 91 basis points, a 40-month low. This slide shows why the market has shifted from an issuer to an investor orientation over the past two months. Prior to May, inflows consistently and convincingly exceeded supply. Since then, the tables have turned. After a neutral reading in May, the gap between net new supply, represented by the first column, and inflows, represented by the second, jumped to $8 billion, the biggest deficit in more than three years. Not for nothing, then, secondary prices trended lower and new issue spreads rose, as the next slides illustrate. Start with secondary prices. In June, LCD's flow name composite, a price index of the 15 most liquid institutional loans, fell about three quarters of a point. The composite did, however, bounce off its 2011 low mark of 96.4 from June 23rd as part of the broader relief rally set off by Greece's budget deal. In the new issue market, the story was similar. Average clearing yields widened about 25 basis points to a five-month high of 5.8 percent. Investors clearly held the high cars. As a result, arrangers had to flex up four times the number of June's loan class and they flex lower, the most investor-friendly reading in a year and a turnabout from earlier in 2011 when spread cuts outnumbered spread increases by a score of 3 to 1. Looking ahead, most participants expect the technical bias to remain negative, particularly in the new issue market where the calendar of new money transactions stands at the highest level since Lehman's bankruptcy. At the end of June, LCD tracked $24 billion of M&A-related loan activity that had yet to launch. And the announcement continued to pace in early June, with no fewer than three LBOs coming to light. BJ Warehouse by Leonard Green and CVC, GoDaddy by KKR and Silver Lake, and Blackboard by Providence Equity. Switching our lens to market fundamentals, the trend continued strong in June. The lagging 12-month default rate was steady at a 40-month low of 91 basis points. That is well inside the historical average of 3.7%. The outlook remains positive. Account managers say that watch lists are extremely short and earnings growth among issuers remains muscular. To wrap up, some final points. For the reasons mentioned above, participants expect the market supply and demand imbalance to continue to favor sellers in the near term. It's a matter of simple economics. On the supply side, the forward calendar remains heavy. On the demand side, however, inflows into loan mutual funds have slowed dramatically in recent weeks and bond takeout volume is eased. The situation may go more tilted as a result of a spate of LBOs that came to light in early July. While mutual fund inflows waned in June, the rehabilitation of the CLO market continued. Collateral managers printed four new deals during the month worth $2.3 billion in aggregate. That brought the total for the first half to $5.3 billion, already topping 2010's full year total of $4.1 billion. CLO issuance has benefited from narrower liability spreads and higher deal leverage. The most recent executions have printed their AAA liabilities at LIBOR plus 120 to 123 compared to 175 to 200 in the first quarter. Equity contributions, meanwhile, have fallen into a 10% context from 15 to 20% earlier in the year. These two trends have helped improve the equity arbitrage of new deals. 
Looking ahead, CLO managers expect production to run in a $1 to $2 billion range each month for the rest of the year, concentrated largely among the big platforms. If so, 2011 is on pace for $15 to $20 billion in new volume. That number, though, is hardly assured. The big constraint managers say is rounding up open market equity and mezzanine liabilities. Finally, most managers expect default rates to remain low, at least through 2012, assuming away, of course, any disruptive outside shock. That brings us to the end of our overview. For more information on the loan market, you can check in with us on the web or via LinkedIn, Twitter, or Facebook. The links for each is in the description of this video. As mentioned, you can also download this presentation at slideshare.net.